today, the 46 marine world heritage sites, uh, which are covered by the World Heritage Convention, cover by surface area about 20% of all marine protected areas on the planet. That's a very substantial number. So we consider that the majority of those marine world heritage sites, they have activities outside their boundaries um, that are impacting the exceptional values of their site. At the same time, they uh, are not necessarily planning for the future. What do you want your World Heritage Site to look like in another 20, 30 years from now? And essentially what we want to do is to use the guidance which already exists at UNESCO through the Intergovernmental Oceanographic uh, Commission to use the guidance on marine spatial planning and help sites, World Heritage Sites, um, to develop uh, and make their outstanding universal value more tangible by translating it in time and space and ultimately guide those sites through a sustainable development for the future. So today the 46 World Heritage Marine sites, which are covered under the World Heritage Convention, cover by surface area about 20% of all marine protected areas on our planet. So that's a very substantial statistic when you think about that. And what we want to do is um, we want to use marine spatial planning to induce uh, a better long-term sustainable development in some of these sites. Essentially, every marine world heritage site uh, is inscribed based on a very specific description uh, of why it is of what we call uh, of outstanding universal value. So. We see in a lot of other marine protected areas today that um, their management is often not based on very specific goals and objectives. Now, marine war heritage sites, in some way, they do have a step ahead because they have been in the process of nominating a uh, for their classification as war heritage, being very seriously and very with a big dedication been specifying exactly what it is that is exceptional in their war heritage site. So we want to use essentially uh, marine spatial planning to make those descriptions of what we call outstanding universal value, to make that more tangible. And uh, the way we want to do that is by translating uh, the exceptional ecosystem processes, the exceptional marine features, uh, which are of world heritage um, value, to describe them uh, in time and space and to help sites guide or use the, uh, their descriptions, which they have for each of their sites, to use that as a guide for management and to induce essentially a long-term future-oriented um, sustainable development of each of their sites. And I think a great example is the Great Barrier Reef, where you really see uh, the Great Barrier Reef is in Australia. It's a World Heritage Site, one of the oldest World Heritage Sites uh, we have on our list. And you see there that it is essential to use your outstanding universal value as a guide for management. And key questions uh, that come to mind as are, when is coastal development too much? When is uh, economic development too much? At what point is it not consistent anymore with uh, the conservation of an exceptional place that is designated as war heritage? So marine spatial planning, we've, we consider that that's really a way to help uh, make uh, outstanding universal value uh, make that tangible, translate it in time and space so that we ultimately can uh, manage uh, those marine war heritage sites uh, and achieve both socioeconomic and environmental objectives.